Welcome to Gazruff Tutorials. I'm Gazruff, and today we're going to look at how to create a makeshift for loop and have it create a grid of cubes for us. To demonstrate what it's going to do, I have created one already, and we're going to hit play, and this is what it's going to do for us. It's going to create a 5x5 five five grid of cubes open up our new script. So here I have a comment and this is the actual syntax for a for loop in Unity. Basically what a for loop does is it gives us an integer, it sets it to zero, and for as long as i is less than whatever length we give it, it will do the code and then add one to it afterwards and then do it again and again and again until we reach our length. How can we do this in Horizon Worlds? There is no for loop, so we kind of have to create our own. And in order to do that, we need to create some variables. The first one will be x. The second one will be z. We need a x length and a z length. We'll also need an asset variable. I'm just going to call this cube. Confirm. We have all our variables. Now we need to create some events. Go to events. And when event is received, we're going to drag one in and two in. So for our first event, we're going to call it 4x. And our second event, we're going to call 4z. First, we need to add a check. So we're going to go under events, control, add an if, drag it in there. And we're going to need one for our z as well. And then we need to find our operators. So we're going to go to operators under logic and we need less than, drag less than here, and we'll copy that and put you here. And then we'll go back to our variables, and we're gonna grab our x variable we created. So if x is less than our length, so our x length, and then if z is less than our z length, so that's this part of the for loop. We're going to grab something else, for both of them that way we can tell it to do something if it's equal to or greater than our length if it's less than our length we need to send an event so we'll go down to event actions send event with delay so that way we can see it spawn if x is less than length we're going to send to our 4z after 0.25 seconds and then we need to spawn our cube so we need to go to actions, scroll down a little bit, and we have our spawn asset code block. And we're just gonna pop that in there. We need to drag in our cube asset from before, and we need to change this. So we're gonna go to operators, and we're gonna scroll all the way down to vector math, and new vector from XYZ. We're gonna copy our X and our Z, and our y will be a number value of 0.5. That way it's not sticking out of the floor. So in order to test this out quick, we're going to need to grab a send event. We don't need a delay on it, so let's go to events, send event to object, and we're going to call this one 4x. Okay, so now we need to attach this script to a object. We're going to get rid of Grid Builder and go to script one. We need to attach our cube. And then we're going to give the x and z length five. Get rid of that. Close that. And there our cube is. So if I were to go to scripts, pause it, restart it, and there it is. Let's go back into script. So in order to get it to keep spawning more, we need to increase our Z. So we're gonna to go to values, set, 
z, we need to increase it by 1. So we're going to add a plus sign, z plus a number input of 1. And now we need to call ourselves. So we're going to grab this send event. And now it's going to send for z to self after a quarter second. And here you see we already have a line. And if we play it again, and there it is. But now we need it to call x. So we're going to go to events, grab an else. So once z is equal to or greater, greater than z length, we need it to call 4x. So we go up to the top and grab our send 4x and pop that in there. But we need to reset our z value. So we're going to copy and paste that down here. We're going to set z to 0. And we need to increase x by 1. So we're going to take our x value, increase it by 1, and then it will call for x. To test this out, we'll, we'll pause it and start it back up. And now we have it creating a grid for us. One more, and it should stop. And there it is. Just some quick cleanup. We're going to add an else here. And I'm going to have it just cancel these events. It's probably not needed, but just to make me happy so that it's not continuing to call, we're going to cancel the events and then we're going to set set our x back to 0. And there you have it. That is how we create a makeshift for loop that creates a grid, something similar to what you would do in Unity. And just to zoom in on the code, and to go over it again, we have when world is started. We're going to send 4x to self with no parameters. When 4x is received with no parameters, it checks if x is less than x length, which we have set to 5. If, it, if this is true, it, we're going to send 4z to self after 0.25 seconds. Probably don't need that like that. So we're going to change that to... If x is less than x length, we're going to send 4z to self with no parameters. When 4z is received, we're going to check if z is less than z length. If it is true, we're going to spawn our cube at a new vector, which is going to be our x on the x, 0 0.5 on the y, and our z on the z. We're going to set z to z plus 1. And then we're going to send 4z to self after 0.25 seconds. And it's going to continue to do this until z is equal to z length. Once it is equal to z length, it's going to set z back to 0, set x to x plus 1, and then send for x to self. And then this will continue to run until x is equal to x length and then we're going to run our cancel events. And that is it for this video. If you enjoyed the video or if you learned anything, please hit that like and subscribe button. If you have any comments, concerns, or ideas for future videos, please let me know in the comment section below and have a good one.